So I was given this uh, beautiful portfolio um, of prints, hand prints, quite a while ago. And um, oh, look at this, I, I haven't looked at these for a while. But there's some beautiful prints. These are hand printed, all, all um, dated and signed by the artist. On Giclair print, which is a very high grade, um, it's a very high grade print. I'm gonna burn one of these. So I loaded this uh, app here, Token Art, it's an NFT app. So you're gonna take a photo of the art for the NFT program. Um, don't, don't worry, I've NFT'd it. There's a lot of talk about NFTs at the moment. You're probably wondering why I'm talking about non-fungible tokens on this show. Well, I believe there's a direct link by the sentimental value that people are placing on digitally stored moments of time, NFTs, and the value we place on fellow humans and how they themselves have hurtled through time, gaining knowledge, overcoming adversities. Let's keep talking to these ones. Let's not devalue the importance of continued conversations with what I deem legends of old, people who have been through a lot. The past is a school, and that's why I'm calling this episode Legends and Vans. The best way to explain an NFT and its connection here is to talk about vans. There's lots of types of vans. There's Van Gogh, this type of van, Van Amerva, and, well, Van Nystad. But what makes these vans more important than, say, my newer vans? Well, it's the sentimental value that they hold. And even though they've got holes in them, I still like to wear them. They've been with me when both my sons were born, we built a home, businesses, and on most days when I tell my wife how special she is. And therein lies the kicker. Um, everybody. We'd like to welcome the one and the only, uh, Mr. Tom Carroll. Thank you, Tom, for um, taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to all your fans in South Africa. And, uh, yeah, look, when you won the guns from 500, I worked it out. I was nine years old. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, well, uh, I was in Durban at the time. Yeah, you, you were nine years old when I won that guns in 1984. Mm. That's correct. Yeah, wow. Um, that's a really memorable win for me. And um and one of the one of the big ones in, in that one for me is that uh uh I was really challenged at that time with uh, Marco Colupo doing so well at J Bay and he was surfing so well at out of com the event before that and um the Spurs Take Ranch event down there and uh that was really uh, and I was, I was a reigning world champ and he was really like stealing my show. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> uh, I, I, no, that's how it felt. Cause you just like, my, you know, he, my, you know, it was a real ego hit and, um, and, um, I had to kind of reassess myself in Durban. I was going, oh man, I, you know, either I, I could have gone either one, or, one of either, either I could have gotten really. I remember the moment in my hotel room where I went, I can either turn this into uh, a negative thing yes. or I can go towards applying myself to improve myself in order to get better with this, you know. And um, 
it was a real moment for me and Dermot. I just went, right, I, I have to apply myself. I didn't like the board that I was using. I was left with this board that um, it didn't quite go as well as the boards that I'd won with the world title, <clears throat> title on. I, I left that board back in Australia and sort of in cold storage and and I'd struggled with it at J Bay. Uh, my longer board was pretty good, the 6-1. But the five nine, I mean, it was five eleven. Uh, wasn't wasn't quite what I was looking for, and I struggled surfing it. And uh, but I, I got okay. This is event. This is a this is a chance for me to overcome myself on a board that's not so good for me, and to learn how to win in in an, you know under this sort of pressure where things weren't quite right, and then try to figure it out and. Um, and, and and that came from that moment in the hotel room, whereas actually I could start to turn things around, and it started to turn f- for the better. <laughs> it was pretty cool, um, and yeah, and, and lo and behold, I, I got myself going. And but you know, after that event at Durban, and winning, getting up in the wind, and, and winning, and then going up to France straight after it, I had. Uh, Hockey in the final in in Lackanau. Oh, and, it was in uh, Lackanau. Okay, Lackanau, and um, and he beat me. <laughs> so I was so <laughs> I bummed. I was so bummed, and I got right. I saw that he was riding Rusty Priestendorf for surfboards, and I've been watching how nicely they sort of fit the water and so on. And I've gone right. That's it. I surrender. I'm going to California to go and visit Rusty Priestendorf. And get myself a few of his boards to see how they go, and that sort of shifted things into another gear, which was really helpful. And um, but yeah, so the Durban event was really and, uh, uh, learning learning how to grow through kind of those those points where you feel like there's one way. There's like a fork in the road. There's literally a fork in the road. Okay, you can either you can get all cranky about this. You can get all twisted about it and bent out of shape and have a chip on your shoulder or you can kind of start to feed, feed off the the information you're getting that's really inspiring you. Because, I mean, the thing was, Oki was surfing so damn good and it was so nice to watch and I, I, uh, and I drew on what he was doing. I didn't want to apply it to my surfing but I just drew on, on how he was you know, moving around the wave and how his body, his body is extraordinary. He's got, a, he's got one of these bodies that um, uh, he's got big old thick ankles and he's got a big ass. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a, and he can get down and he can get down really low. Low centre of gravity. Yeah, low centre of gravity and also the way he uses his upper body um, as opposed to the lower body. And it, and he, he does it with such um, finesse, you know, mm-hmm. and and – and very tight positions in the way. So that was really inspiring to me. And it gave me, gave me a lot of energy just watching it from that point of view. Was that? Anyway, was, that was the Gunston. The, the, the Gunston farm that you, you mentioned that you, you, the board that you put in storage was a slightly bigger board. Um, was that a major factor that, that you were surfing a much, uh, well, a smaller board than, than you were you, uh, usually? Uh, well, Durban that, that year wasn't, wasn't great. Like it wasn't. And I'm, I was I was going stepping down anyway, naturally stepping down to a five eleven. I was riding long boards like a six one was uh, six one five eleven and six and five nine. Those that was my sizes that I used to carry, and we carry usually carry two of the five elevens, and so a smaller board five nine just in case things got really small. Or six one was my my big board. And every now and then I'd take a 6.3. The net to those sort of events because I knew it wasn't going to be major like size, but uh, J Bay, I needed the 6.1. I was we had some amazing surfing J Bay that year. Incredible. I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, did you score J Bay? Um, unbelievable, like perfect. I remember surfing a heat with Simon Anderson and it was the second round of event and it was like, six to eight feet and a brand new swell and the wind was, you know, coming up the face in the morning and just, and they're running 
45 minute heats. Uh, and it's basically five wave sets just boom, just pouring down the down the point. And it was just a man on man heat. And then it, we had to get out there 15 minutes before because the sets were full on. And <clears throat> never forget being on the rocks with Simon. Go look, Simon! It, the wind had just changed to make the make the the face just perfect, just that perfect, perfectly groomed face as the wind came round to the southwest. And I've just or, almost sort of yeah, the west southwest. And I was just like, how's this? Simon? He goes, I know. I guess we got. Guess we got to go out, Tommy. <laughs> it's just the way the dry way put it, you know. I guess it was like the best surfer I'd ever sur- I'd seen. I was going, looking at going, we're going to surf a heat, and we paddled out. And I didn't see him the whole time, Simon. I was basically just, yeah, just had this perfect forty-five minutes to surf Jay Bay. <laughs> Amazing. And I, Every now and then we pass each other like flying down the way. Yeah, you go, Simon. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty epic. Good time. Good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, I think um, the reason why I wanted to talk to you and the reason why I'm talking to, um, uh, you know, Brad Gerlach and a few of the, the, the stalwarts of, you know, like I like to put them, the legends, is because um, surfing is not only and hasn't only undergone such a huge sort of change in its outlook in terms of like looking at more retro craft over the last sort of five years but over the COVID period we've just seen a a major influx of especially in California there's been something like two million (laughs) new people taking up surfing so there seems to be a resurgence in the um in the the love of you know the ocean and connecting and, and and surfing I suppose is but it's so important for especially, and I'm talking about the South African younger audience now, to connect with um, and to understand as much as we don't want to sort of look back at the negatives, we can still learn from the past as a school. And it's important within tribes to always, um, and I think we've lost this a little bit, consult, uh, have mentors from the elders who have walked the walk They've failed in many instances and got back up. And uh, to be able to speak to elders within a tribe is so important for the youth of today. And, and that's why uh, I'm, I reached out to you and that's why I'm reaching out to a lot of mm-hmm. the, the older surfers because we can learn so much and the younger ones can learn so much because at the moment it's just there's a lot of haze around, you know, and we sp- touched on this yesterday. <coughs> and that's exactly um, why... I think these conversations are are good and healthy because if anything, it's 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 putting a, a positive vibe out there. And if, if no one does it, like how are the youth actually going to sort of have these sort of nuggets and, and be empowered with a bit of knowledge if we don't have these conversations? Whether most of them listen or not, at least it's there. And one day maybe they'll, yeah. find, they'll find this conversation. Mm. You know? mm. Mm. And that's great. Yeah, it's good. I think it's, yeah, definitely. I was naturally looking at, um, you know, when I was, I was actually this morning. Uh, I had, I have like a bunch of kids around that about the age of between eight and thirteen, and there's about ten of them. And I take them surfing. We do a little coaching session. Um, their fathers come down and they join in, <laughs> a little bit of fun. But it's just wonderful, like getting together and seeing how they interact with each other. Mm. And uh, and how much they support each other. It's so cool. And, so, you know, it's it's just really encouraging to see that spirit within them. I think um, when I was young, it was really nice to have someone uh, around who was – I'd naturally want to look up. I'd naturally want to follow and look up to someone, whether it was, a, you know, not, not, such, not such a uh, – what – Maybe your parents would say, "Oh, that's not the right person to look up to." Maybe we needed to sort of that sort of like help. <laughs> but um, <coughs> I think with I just naturally want to do it. And I think that's what kids want to do, and they'll go through. They'll seek it out anyway, in some way, some form or another. Mm. They will seek out a role model, 
no matter what, you know, if they're, and they'll naturally do this, particularly going into their early teens. Mm. And that's what I did. All the, the, the older surfers of the beach always looked up to them. Speaking about the, the youth of today, and, um, you know, I remember growing up as a kid, the poster on the wall was, was, was you on your burn on that bright yellow or, other, you know, I, I always remember that bright lumo yellowy green colour mm. with burn on the nose and then this mm. massive power drive. And um, mm. one of my questions to you was going to be, uh, what's your take on the, the, the new school way of, of, of approach to surf contests and, you know, your, your synonymous power surfing um, mm. that we see not as often. Um, what's your what's your view on the new school of uh, of kids coming through? I lo- I love it. I love I love watching what they're doing today. You know, whether they, you know the the um, I feel it really is a refined um, a refined version, uh, very much evolved and refined version of what we're doing. Even though, like. Uh, yeah, we we were kind of laying in the cuz, but the, the 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 equipment today, you know, they can really refine themselves through better equipment. Uh, the board surfboards are much more refined. Their approach. Uh, thank you for the WSL coming in and investing so much in the sport because it's just lifted the the the, the actual level of surfing when I watched it in the local beaches. As they as the tour came through Newcastle, which is two hours north, and and Narrabeen Beach, which is fifteen minutes drive from my house, so watching and being involved and seeing them and practicing, uh, well, well, surfing while the practice sessions were on, uh, and getting close to them and watching what they were doing was so good, uh, and I really think they, you know, the girls and the guys. Um, are really doing okay. some amazing things today, mm. and I, and I'm inspired. Like I love watching, just, you know, the power of of Italo Ferreira and Gabe Medina, you know, John John Florence in Margaret River. You know, he turned up and showed up and did his thing. Yeah. Really sad that he had to step out due to you know knee knee blow out, but. Um, yeah, that's going to happen in, when we're pushing it. And um, but the, you know, what they're doing is wonderful. People like you know, like I mentioned, Carissa Moore, like surfing with her, it, it was just really amazing. We had a surf in Newcastle, and watched her uh, just you know drive a few turns close by, and I was just going, man, she and, and she's pushing it like out into the air. Air games is getting better and surprising herself because <laughs> she's like that. <laughs> and I think uh, this sort of stuff's just, it's just getting, and it, it's, it, surfing's hard <laughs> to evolve surfing. You think about what we've got to do. We've got to actually remember what we did. Yet memory, short term memory, super important during to improve surfing. We won't, um, if, we've, if we lose our short term memory, we, won't, we just won't, simply won't improve. We, uh, uh, we can get on the video um, and video analysis. That really helps us. Uh, but when we're, you know, uh, working on equipment and working with our surfboard shaper or manufacturers and, and redesigning and redesigning re- and, and actually designing in our head while we're surfing and relaying these messages, you know, the message, the, the language between the surfer and shaper, if you're not making your own boards, which is very rare today, as a pro surfer, uh, is the language has to be really clear, and the shaper has to be really tuned into what the surfer is doing and what what the surfer needs. And I think that has got next level. Like yeah. um, it's gone next level. So I think the whole game is has been lifted, and I just love watching it. I I love watching what they're doing on a wave, and. Um, and I think the the power and the strength is in there. I think they're being able to sort of turn, uh, you know, 
to lay down the power and then get hit the air. You saw it at, at, at particularly at Margaret River in the power. That's one area where I think, oh, the surfing is still kind of similar as what, what we did on the, on the bigger ways, but then it's starting to really lift. It's really starting to lift. I mean, Ryan Callahan on his backhand, backhand at, um, at, at Margaret River, it was incredible. Mm. Yeah, man, I, I, th- like you said, that, that, um, the working relationship between shapers nowadays and, and riders is just, it's, it's never been stronger, I don't think. Mm. You know? mm. They're working so closely together and making sure that they, you know, and, and that's what made it, I suppose, different in the past as well. I mean, you said you got on a plane and went to, to California to, to hook yourself up with some boards. Um, mm. Now it's, it's a Zoom call. It's a, you know, files, yeah. files and, and, and things get transferred so quickly between the shaper and the rider. Um, mm. Yeah, things have certainly progressed. And, and as you spoke of, some things about now in terms of tech and technology are of such benefit mm. to the progression mm. of surfing, mm. of, you know, being uh, able to um, get your name out there as a, as a personal mm. brand, as a surfer. Um, mm. And it's just, I guess it's just finding that balance because as you said, this little device can also be a huge weight on your shoulders when mm. you're sitting, you're sitting watching a heat and, and it's, it's there real lifetime. Whereas before, um, you didn't have that, you know what I mean? And your mind, yeah, I, I, your mind could be somewhere else. I don't know what, what I would have done. Like I was such a distracted <laughs> human being. I'm a distracted human being. Like, And I don't know how I would have dealt with the discipline of like putting that down um, two weeks out to a contest at least, just sort of just putting that thing down really, or even <clears throat> during training, just, just putting that thing away not even turning it on and this is getting stuck in and really focusing and putting all my energy I, because I was so driven, I probably would have been able to do it, but I was so distracted. I would have been, there were just times when I was super distracted um, on what other people were doing and what they were thinking and, and how uh, uh, the other, the other surfers are doing and what they're doing and I should be doing that, not what I'm doing. That that sort of thinking um, can be really inflamed by this stuff, mm, the the social media particularly. Yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. I suppose it's uh, a, a, and given the shift in in how much more we're now using digital media over the you mm. know the COVID period, and we're so much more mm. open to conversations like these. Whereas in the past, it was mm. you know even just pre COVID, we've seen it. We've seen a major shift. Mm. And so, Tom, what, uh, like, do you do you want to do you want to chat about your epiphany that you had in life? Because um, <laughs> it's up to you. I, I mean, I don't want to dredge up things you don't want to discuss. Yeah. But I mean, the epiphany. Me, yeah, you said to me that yeah. you had a you had a, a wake up call. You had a an, an enlightenment to a degree as to, you know, a shift in your focus in life. And uh, I suppose one of the questions would then be, what was the transition for you like coming and or, or taking yourself out of the professional surfing tour or world and, and integrating after that? I think I'm still doing it. <laughs> You know, in some sort of form, fashion, I've been, I've been, really, I've been supported within the industry. I'm still, I still have, spon- still have sponsorship with Quicksilver, and that's been going since I was, uh, yeah, just re-signed this year for another three years, and that, that's, it's just not a big thing like it used to be, not a, like a massive thing, but I'm still involved with that relationship. And that's been going since I was, well, I started when I was 13. I ended up getting sponsored with Sean Thompson with Instinct there for a couple of years and then I went back to Quicksilver. But that's like a two-year break. And um, that was, you know, you think about that relationship, it's a long time, you know, thir- you know 13 to 59 and it's actually going to be 60, it'll be 62. <laughs> I'll be 62. <laughs> so they, they, they have that value within the brand and, and be involved with, the company's been, yeah, it's been pretty amazing. But um, 
but um, yeah, moving on uh, from being on tour and having that structure around you and, uh, you know, and the tour is tricky. It's a hard, it's a hard yard. It's hard yards because, you know, you'd be, you're only as good as your last result and you're always looking to, and, and you've got all these, you know, you got all these expectations of yourself and you got to learn to how to kind of be friendly with yourself. You got to learn to be, you know, to make peace with yourself all the time and, and in, in, in the, in the fast paced world, the travel, constant travel back in the day, we, we were doing up to 26 events a year. And wow. sometimes, sometimes, you know, back then traveling with all those boards, it's no fin. We didn't have fin. <laughs> we didn't have fin, uh, you know, FCS or futures or anything. We just, we just, we just had to get really good at fixing <laughs> broken fins and not carrying so many boards and, I noticed uh, when I, when I had, a, had a surf with Italo Ferreira one morning real early before the contest down there at Narrowband and met up with him at the place we were staying and we were hanging out and talking and then we had some breakfast after. It was a really cool morning and I said, how many boards are you travelling with? And he goes, oh, 28. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, went, oh, I used to travel with four. Uh, oh. Very different time. and um, But, yeah, sort of. Uh, it, it was, it's such a different time, but we'll, you know, the ins and outs of just traveling in and out. Sometimes I'd wake up and I, I just didn't know. I'd be in a hotel room. I go, where, where am I? <laughs> it was a tricky time traveling back then. But when I finally decided to make, you know, decided to step off the tour, which is early nineties, nineteen ninety three, I had two children. Uh, young babies and uh, I really had to look beyond the competition. I, I, I just, Kelly Slater just stepped onto the scene. I just didn't have that. I, I couldn't feel myself um, taking a break and then coming back. Mm. I, I couldn't feel it at that time. Maybe I could have done that uh, in, in hindsight, but um, because I went through a few years after that, but I'd already made a pretty strong decision in myself that I wasn't I, I wasn't up for um, in 1989 after losing 1988 after losing my chance at the third world title. Like, kind of stepped away from the way that all happened for me. Uh, it made me step away from competition uh, in surfing and the way the structure of it was. And um, and I stepped away and just went. Oh, I'm just going to win the one events that I really like to win, <laughs> and one of them would particularly was the Pipeline Masters. But uh, and that's all I kind of did. I just went. Oh, I just want to. S-. And so and then I thought, oh, I'm going to step off the tour and because I just don't feel competitive like I used to be, particularly after having two daughters and I'm trying to be a father. <laughs> On the tour, I was so self-centered. I was so self-interested in every moment of my life, and and that's kind of what you kind of be to be to get the best out of yourself and and reinvent yourself all the time as a person who wants to win and 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 you know I'm sure I hope that's why I'm fascinated in Kelly Slater's uh, journey because he he reinvented himself every time. You've got to reinvent yourself every time, the um, the the you know to win another world title. You have to. You're not going to. It's not. It's always thinking. It's a funny thing right now. We're talking about COVID. But I just wanted to be. You know, we're going to go back to what it's like. No, we're not. <laughs> That's the same thing. You never go back. You, we never go back. No, uh, we're going forward to what we're going to be. You know, and so let's put in what we need to do right now to actually recreate this new new year and I, I just lost a lot of that energy in um, 1988 um, at the end of the year and and by the time 90, early 90s came I, and again stepping off the tour uh, it was very disorientating, super disorientating. Mm. I thought I was going to breeze in. I had a, had a good, you know, 
invested a bit of money and got um, got started with a Quicksilver license and to do wetsuits and accessories with a couple of partners and we started working that and um, I wouldn't say that I'm the greatest business person but um, I got stuck into that, you know, and, and Quicksilver were really sort of picking up steam within themselves and the marketing of that. You know, we'll start. We we're just starting to explore the Mentawa Islands. No one had been up there, and and that became a real um, a place to start to use as for imagery. <clears throat> so we got involved with a couple of really amazing projects with um, Martin Daly from the Indies Trader, and all that sort of stuff was really like blossoming in the nineties. Yeah. And I was right in the thick of it, and <clears throat> it was a really a, Amazing time to be free to to do such projects of exploring reefs and islands and I just it's out of hand the dream what a dream life and I just go well uh, and I wasn't I wasn't really missing it there for a bit uh, but every now and then I'd have these disorientating sort of pangs you know um, if it, I tell you what if it was being televised on my phone on a phone all the time during that time. And I was watching it all the time, watching these people compete that I was just competing with or watching the new guys come and I'll be watching, you know, I would have been obsessed and uh, and I would have probably disappeared up my own butt <laughs> uh, with it and just gone, oh, look, uh, well, girls, you try to figure it out and I'm, I'm going back on the tour. <laughs> I mean, I could have done that. I could have done that and um, and or dragged them around the tour. Yeah. and. Which, um, in any case, it was probably not that healthy to do that. But <clears throat> um, uh, I was back at home, and you know, in between doing travelling trips and so on uh, with Quicksilver, I was pretty much at home and learning to be a dad, um, doing the you know nappy changing and yeah, uh, yeah, and all that sort of stuff, and going shopping and you know, mowing the lawn and um, I, I didn't get it though. I, I just still still thought I still had my head kind of up on but <laughs> still still pretty much a very self-centred, um, uh, you know, Tom Carroll, like uh, as in, uh, you know, like uh, mm. in, inside my own story, yeah. Mm. Well, like you said, it's... Uh... You know, it comes with the territory, and to mm. to be that brand, to be that person, mm. uh, uh, there's sacrifice, and the sacrifice, mm. unfortunately, uh, is is oftentimes people around us, and uh, mm. those that uh, have to have to, because you're constantly, as you say, you're constantly shifting. It's like a, it's like, I mean, mm. you're a, you're a man who's a, you're a camera, you're a photographer, mm. so you understand mm. the concept of of. Mm. Focusing a lens all the time, mm. and mm. that's what uh, being a top class athlete is all about: staying ahead of the mm. pack and making sure that you you're refocusing at you know at every point in your mm. in your career. And uh, we've all been thrust into that category over the last twelve months. You know, having to refocus, having to um, take a, especially in, in countries like South Africa, where you know we don't have the, the governmental support from a mm. wage perspective <clears throat> and, you know, yeah. it's been carnage. People have lost businesses mm. and really what it's done is it's, it's the positive spin-off is it's got mm. us to, to realize we can live with a lot less for a start. Mm -hmm. um, mm. It's, it's got us, it's forced us to be at home and with family and to focus on those around us as opposed mm. to just ourselves and our career mm. because we're not, mm getting in the car and going to work. And it's, um, mm -hmm. if anything, it's, it's brought the world closer together in mm -hmm. terms of like communicating and people are more open to collaborations and, mm -hmm. you know, and doing things with others more and, and less of that old mm -hmm. school way of like, you know, competition, you know, no one, no one peeks over the fence and, and, mm -hmm. and looks at my mm -hmm. secrets, you know, that's the, you mm -hmm. know, it's almost like the old school way of doing things now. Yeah. It's more open mm -hmm more open to conversations and, mm. and feeding off each other's good points, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Get you, Steve. Yeah. And that's the cool thing about all this, man. It's like, 
we've we've finally all had to refocus and 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 almost you, you put into the same sort of shoes as an athlete like because they're constantly doing it like to stay ahead of the pack mm. you know to like mm -hmm. look at yourself and refine yourself mm -hmm. and hone your skills mm -hmm. now as a dad mm -hmm. i'm at home all the time with my two boys you know you're having mm -hmm. to Stay ahead of those boys. Yeah, like, I love you, yeah. Too, you know what I mean. And like, yeah, you got to like really focus on on how you do mm. things to yeah. be this uh, this ultimate dad that you want to be. That you, yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. And how old are your kids now, Tom? They they must be quite grown up. Well, I've got um, my oldest daughter, Jenna. She's twenty nine. My middle daughter, she that's Mimi, she's uh, 27. And then there's Grace, who's 18. Okay. So, yeah, they're all, um, yeah, they're, they're um, doing real good. They're healthy and just doing the things that, you know, they're out there having a good go at life. And, man, they're, they're, that's all I can ask for. They're. They've been really good girls. They've, they've been really blessed with some good, healthy girls and um, and strong, strong, healthy girls. Yeah. Mm. Brilliant. Yeah. And creative and and they really, they, I think the one thing that kind of talking, Tom, listening. comes from, one thing that comes from doing what you really love doing, yeah. your kids see what you're doing. And they just go and do what they love doing. <laughs> so it just it just feeds it, it feeds itself that, um, and it's um, yeah. At the moment, it's all it's all humming along pretty nicely. You know, natural challenges there, but that's all they are. They're challenges. Um, you know, they've taught me more about me than I could have done without them. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, they they've taught me more about me than I can ever done on my own. They're, they're, um, they're, yeah, they're definitely showing me, you know, all my pitfalls, you know, all my, and my, my strengths and, and weaknesses, everything gets, it gets shown up and with, with them, you know, on, on board and they're, they're just a beautiful gift. Um, as long as I'm out of the way, it all comes to work pretty good, you know. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, that's been that's been a regular kind of message from them, um, and then they kind of naturally come. Whereas if I'm in the way, getting kind of get my hands in there, trying to kind of do it my have it, have it done my well, you should be doing this. Da, da, da. <laughs> it's just, too too smart. They're too smart. Yeah, mm. yeah. That it must be difficult at times uh, to be so restrained mm. because uh, mm. you, you, you. But I can only but imagine it's because of your total shift in mindset from when you were mm. a young man and self-focused and a competitor to mm. you know you've you've undergone uh, uh, tribulations in your life and you've got through that mm. and and the the spin-off mm. is that you you're now more grounded and. You're more, mm. well, you, you, you're a very humble man, which is what I'm very thankful mm. for because you've got all, all these years of experience, an amazing career, and yet you're willing to just have these conversations like this. And I'm really, uh, I'm really appreciative of that. And um, uh, the vibes that, that will get sent out through this in South Africa is that we need it, man. We need it. Beautiful. So, so thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yeah. It's been cool getting to know you. Mm. Well, it's lovely hanging in. Um, I uh, I love to come back and visit South Africa at some point um, again. I last time I was there in two thousand and six, and it's a while back now. So it is, yeah, yeah. We we um, when I we actually f I filmed with Ross Clark Jones um, <clears throat> uh, down there at. Um, for about six weeks, spent six weeks in Cape Town. I actually came up to Durban for one one couple of nights, but um, basically spent a bit of time down there shooting our first, it was the first sort of, it was the, the 
the first trial at what turned out to be Storm Surfers, which is something I did with with Ross um, in early in early early two two tens and two two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve, and. Um, but yeah, we did a few episodes. Uh, but but that two thousand six, we shot <coughs> we shot off the southwestern Cape, and uh, I'll never forget that trip. We had a great time, fantastic time, and um, I look forward to coming back. And yeah, man, you're always welcome. Sort of we'll feeling it out down there. Mm-hmm. We'll look after you, and we'll we'll make sure we got some boards ready for you. And <laughs> if you come up near J Bay, we're on the garden route. Yeah, we'll we'll cook you a good dinner. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it's been an absolute Pleasure, Steve. treat getting to know you and chatting to you. Mm. And all the very best. We'll be bringing actually tomorrow morning. This is a Saturday morning, I think. Um, don't know how that will play out here, but uh, yeah, Tuesday morning, uh, Thursday morning, and Saturday morning, I'll, I'll run a um, a ten minute meditation, which is very easy, very doable for people who has come up for their first meditation practice or just starting to, to understand uh, what, or have an inquiry, just having, oh, what is going on with that stuff? Maybe I need to meditate because I'm thinking too much. <laughs> That's a regular thing. But um, we can, uh, yeah, come and join in, Instagram Live. Uh, it'll be thinking about timeline. Um, it would be in the evening for you guys. It if will, it's yeah. in the morning at 5.50 a.m., it's it's about nine at night, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So something you can do before going uh, to sleep nine or ten at night. Yeah, you can have a have a uh, yeah. Come in, chime in, and and, and see how you go. Mm. Sounds lovely. We'll pleasure. We'll put yeah. all the information in the links below. But um, beautiful. Again, thank you for your time, Tom, and uh, you take care, and uh, we'll stay in touch. That's stay. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Have a lovely Bye. day. Also, big ups to our media sponsors, Zigzag, you guys rock.